The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Dios Todopoderoso y Eterno, tú no aborreces nada de lo que has creado y perdonas los pecados de todos los penitentes. Crea y forme en nosotros corazones nuevos y contritos para que lamentando debidamente nuestros pecados y reconociendo nuestra miseria, obtengamos de ti, Dios de toda misericordia, perfecta remisión y perdón. Mediante Jesucristo nuestro Señor, que vive y reina contigo y el Espíritu Santo, un solo Dios, por los siglos de los siglos. Amén. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Shout out, do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet, and announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of the God. They asked of me righteous judgments, they delighted to draw near to God. Why do we fast, but you do not see? Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interest on the fast day and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with the wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. In such the fast that I choose, a day to humble oneself, it is to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes. Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? It is not this fast that I choose. I loose the bonds of the injustice to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke. It is not to share your, it is not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor to your house when you see the naked to cover them, and not to hide yourself from your own kin. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose water never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt, and you shall rise up the foundation of many generations, and you shall be called the repairer of the branch restore the streets to live in. The word of the Lord.
la epístola. En el nombre de Cristo les rogamos que acepten el reconciliarse con Dios. Cristo no cometió pecado alguno, pero por causa nuestra Dios lo hizo pecado, para hacernos a nosotros justicia de Dios en Cristo. Ahora pues, como colaboradores en la obra de Dios, les rogamos a ustedes que no desaprovechen la bondad que Dios les ha mostrado, porque Él dice en las Escrituras, en el momento oportuno te escuché, en el día de la salvación te ayudé, y ahora es el momento oportuno, ahora es el día de la salvación. En nada damos mal ejemplo a nadie para que nuestro trabajo no caiga en descrédito. Al contrario, en todo damos muestras de que somos siervos de Dios, soportando con mucha paciencia los, sufri los sufrimientos, las necesidades, las dificultades, los azotes, las prisiones, los alborotos, el trabajo duro, los desvelos y el hambre. También lo demostramos por nuestra pureza de vida, por nuestro conocimiento de la verdad, por nuestra tolerancia y bondad, por la presencia del Espíritu Santo en nosotros, por nuestro amor sincero, por nuestro mensaje de verdad y por el poder de Dios en nosotros. Usamos las armas de la rectitud tanto para el ataque como para la defensa. Unas veces se nos honra y otras veces se nos ofende. Unas veces se habla bien de nosotros y otras veces se habla mal. Nos tratan como a mentirosos, a pesar de que decimos la verdad. Nos tratan como a desconocidos, a pesar de que somos bien conocidos. Estamos medio muertos, pero seguimos viviendo. Nos castigan, pero no nos matan. Parecemos tristes, pero siempre estamos contentos. Parecemos pobres, pero enriquecemos a muchos. Parece que no tenemos nada, pero lo tenemos todo. Palabra del Señor. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory Jesus said, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door, and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, 
for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. I'm going to guess that nobody here has ever heard of something called Bone Stark's Law, although I was surprised somebody at the earlier service did. Bone Stark's Law is an idea that I remember from my liturgy class in seminary. It's the understanding that liturgies of liturgies of dysphoric solemnity, dysphoric as opposed to euphoric. So liturgies that have to do with our times of real trauma, death, fear, sickness, um, are the last to change. Liturgies of dysphoric solemnity are the last to change. When I was in seminary in that liturgy class, we were in the midst of changing prayer books. That was about 40 years ago. So the prayer book that I suspect all of you are familiar with was the new prayer book. And of course, people of my generation still sometimes call that the new prayer book. Bohm Stark's Law was a way of explaining why in that prayer book, We could have one wonderful new liturgy for baptism, which we celebrated last Sunday, but we had to have two different rites for funerals, one of which retained the old words, the old language, to some degree the old theology. Bohm-Stark's Law also helps explain why some of us clergy were asked for years after the new prayer book was adopted to do funerals with the old prayer book, please. Bohm Stark's Law also, I realized at some point, helps explain why some years ago I gave up Lent for Lent. <laughs> what happened, I realized, is that Bohm Stark's Law had become personal, not liturgical, and that that was not appropriate. So just a little bit of background about those two prayer books because it's relevant here. In the former prayer book, which some of us, I suspect, grew up with and and remember, the basic theology was that human beings are miserable sinners who live in fear of a God who is justifiably angry and hope that by the end of our lives we will be justified, whatever that might mean, and earn somehow or merit somehow or become worthy of eternal life. It's a very penitential kind of theology. The new prayer book changed that entirely. In the new prayer book, we look at human beings as essentially partners with God. Human beings are put here to do God's work in the world, to bring God's kingdom to fruition on earth insofar as we can do that. And so 
the focus is on respecting the dignity of every human being, on our responsibility for the earth. It's a theology of stewardship rather than a theology of penitence. But then we get to Lent. This wonderful Ash Wednesday liturgy that we are participating in right now is a penitential liturgy. No two ways about it. And certainly an appropriate beginning for the Lenten season of reflection. But I found some years ago that when we had changed the theology, and I really buy into the theology, the theology of the new prayer book is certainly mine, I hadn't changed my Lenten practice. We went through the Ash Wednesday liturgy. I went right back to the kinds of things that I had been doing before, and I found myself in the midst of Lent trying to deal with a God who was not the God that I lived with the rest of the year. A God who actually cared if I had a bite of chocolate and got annoyed if I didn't do something that, you know, that I had thought I was going to do as my Lenten practice. This is not the kind of God that I understand. The God that I understand and live with created me and every single person in the world for a purpose, to do a job. The God that I live with loves every single one of us and wants every one of us to be, in a sense, profitable, to do what God wants us to do, to help bring God's kingdom to earth in whatever unique way God has in mind for each of us. So, of course, my giving up Lent didn't last very long. But when I came back to it, when I realized that Lent is such a productive time that I needed a Lenten practice, that I needed to use this period, I came back with the understanding that my Lenten practice should support my sense of who God was, and that instead of being penitential, I started to focus on Lent as a period when I thought about stewardship, a period of change. Bohmstark's law may be fine for liturgy, but human life needs to change. We are always changing. So I want to think for a moment about what Lenten practice might look like if it were focused on stewardship and not penitence. And I'll do it from my point of view because I'm the new kid on the block here. I have a feeling that most of you have your own Lenten practices that you probably have heard this theology many times before. But anyway. There are several ways to look at what Lent is, and they come so often in threes. You know, good stories come in threes. One way of looking at the 40 days of Lent is as a reflection of Jesus being in the wilderness. We'll hear that gospel next week, trying to figure out what God wanted him to do with his life. Another way is thinking about the Hebrew people in the wilderness, 40 years, trying to understand what it meant to be God's people. Another way, and one that I have come to value, is the thought of Lent as the journey, Jeff preached about this last Sunday, the journey from the mountain of transfiguration to the end of Jesus' life, that journey that Jesus and his disciples made together. From that point of understanding who Jesus was, of understanding Jesus as God's beloved to the end of Jesus' life, or for us, as understanding ourselves as having a role to play for God, and how we walk through that to the end of Lent, or our lives, or whatever. We change. And so the image of a journey I find as a good one. When I was 19 and just becoming acquainted with the Episcopal Church, 
God certainly had something different in mind for me than when I was 39 and beginning seminary. And that was certainly different from now that I'm 79 and finally retired at last, so to speak, and uh, living in a new community and having just moved to a new situation. If we are to do what God wants, if we are to bring God's kingdom to the world, we need to be flexible, we need to be nimble, we need to change. And I find Lent a really good time to form new habits. So, the typical Lenten disciplines, more threes, prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, that was in today's gospel. Prayer, fasting, and self-denial we hear in a few minutes. Jesus' temptations in the wilderness, maybe greed, power, um, Hmm. forgotten the third, but dealing with the three temptations of the devil. What I like to do is think about stewardship of mind, body, and spirit, or body, mind, and spirit. Let's start with the body. I'm always surprised, or I'm surprised these days, that we don't talk very much about our stewardship of our bodies. These bodies, you know, whatever size, shape, age they are, are what God gives us to do God's will in the world, to bring God's kingdom to the world. And so anything that we can do to take care of our bodies, anything that we can do that involves stewardship of our bodies, I think is a really good Lenten practice. And, you know, we all know those things that we ought to be doing. Eat less, drink less, walk more. Um, Use sunscreen, that's one that I need to do. I was told at one point that one should never diet or look at Lent as a diet because, you know, that wasn't spiritual enough. I've changed my mind on that entirely. I think perhaps that's one of the best spiritual practices there is. But thinking about some habit that we can practice that is stewardship of our body is one beginning. Stewardship of our mind. We live in a world these days, it seems to me, that tells us that we should not be using our minds, that we should, in fact, believe what somebody else tells us. And again, anything we can do to engage our minds, to use those good minds that God has given us to think more deeply, to move outside of our usual patterns, I think is useful. I sometimes read a book on a topic that's entirely different to me. And I believe you'll find an insert in your bulletin that has a lot of wonderful courses available here at, um, in this congregation during Lent, which would be a good beginning. Using our minds, thinking about using our minds as being stewards of one of God's gifts is another step in the right direction. But the third, the third discipline, the use of the spirit, our stewardship of our spirit, is what I think is most important. And for me, that is how we live our lives, what our focus is, what our values are. Isaiah, in the passage we heard today, gave a good description of the kind of fast that God would like. Don't speak evil. Be kind to one another. Feed the hungry. Do what you can to help other people. Any little thing that we can practice helps make the world a little better. The congregation that I I last served in Maine I was there for about three years, had just parted from their priest under very difficult circumstances. They were down to about 11 people, and they had a pattern of conversation that was put-downs and snide comments, sort of like um, sitcoms on television. There were three of us clergy serving them fairly regularly, and sermon after sermon talked about how one should speak kindly. And by the time I left, I was very moved to see even 
the two people who are really the, the worst, the, the, the most knee-jerk, beginning to think about how they talked. Thinking about how you can be kind to the people around you is certainly one way, one good Lenten discipline. Or almsgiving, figuring out what the next group is that you want to support or who you want to give something to or where you can put your time. I don't need to tell you all these things. These are things that, that I do and have done and have been useful for me. The point, though, is that if we do these, if, if we establish a Lenten practice that is forming a good habit, it doesn't have to end at the end of Lent. It can if it doesn't work, but it doesn't have to. And if, if every one of us here were to form some new habits that brought each of us a little closer to what God wanted us to be, then six weeks from now, we would have real cause for celebration. We would, in fact, have made this little corner of the world much closer to the kingdom of God. Dear people of God, the first Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection, and it became the custom of the church to prepare for them by a season of penitence and fasting. This season of Lent provided a time in which converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when those who, because of notorious sins, had been separated from the body of the faithful, were reconciled by penitence and forgiveness, and restored to the fellowship of the church. Thereby, the whole congregation was put in mind of the message of pardon and absolution set forth in the gospel of our Savior, and of the need which all Christians continually have to renew their repentance and faith. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the church, to the observance of a holy Lent by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word, and to make a right beginning of repentance, and as a mark of our mortal nature, let us now kneel before the Lord, our Maker and Redeemer. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be to us a sign of our mortality and penitence, 
that we may remember that it is only by your gracious gift that we are given everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen.
Most holy and merciful Father, we confess to you and to one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth that we have sinned by our own fault in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. No te hemos amado con todo el corazón, con toda la mente y con toda la fuerza. No hemos amado a nuestro prójimo como a nosotros mismos. No hemos perdonado a los demás como tú nos has perdonado. We have been deaf to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Te confesamos, Señor, toda nuestra infelidad pasada el orgullo, la hipocresía y la impaciencia de nuestras vidas. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways and our exploitation of other people. Nuestro enojo ante nuestras propias frustraciones y nuestra envidia de aquellos que son más afortunados que nosotros. Our intemperate love of worldly goods and comforts and our dishonesty in daily life and work. Nuestra negligencia en la oración y en el culto y nuestro descuido en dar testimonio de la fe que está en nosotros. Accept our repentance, Lord, for the wrongs we have done, for our blindness to human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. Por todos los juicios falsos, por la falta de caridad de nuestros pensamientos para con nuestro prójimo, y por nuestros prejuicios y menosprecio hacia aquellos que difieren de nosotros. For our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us. Restauranos, buen Señor, y aparta tu ira de nosotros. Accomplish in us the work of your salvation. Por la cruz y pasión de tu Hijo nuestro Señor. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desires not the death of sinners, but rather that they may turn from their wickedness and live, has given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardons and absolves all those who truly repent and with sincere hearts believe his holy gospel. Por tanto, roguémosle que nos conceda verdadero arrepentimiento y su Espíritu Santo, a fin de que las obras que hacemos este día, día les sean agradables, y que nuestra vida de aquí en adelante sea pura y santa, para que al fin lleguemos a su gozo eterno, por Jesucristo nuestro Señor. Amén. The peace of the Lord be always with you. seated for a moment. Good evening, buenas noches y bienvenidos a todo. Welcome to St. Paul's Cathedral. My name is Penny Bridges. I serve as the Dean uh, or Senior Pastor of St. Paul's. And it's my joy to welcome you tonight, whoever you are and wherever you find yourself in the journey of faith. You are 
most welcome to participate in all that we do here. God's table is open to everyone. Uh, and when you come forward for communion, I invite you, if you wish to receive the sacrament, to put your hands together, one on top of the other. If you prefer to receive a blessing, cross your hands at your shoulders, and we'll know what to do. There will be gluten-free wafers for those who need them over here at, during communion. Um, and as Vesta mentioned, I hope you found an insert in your bulletin um, with um, information about our Lent formation programs, um, and I hope that you will take that home and think and pray about it and sign up for one or more of them. Please stand as you're able. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
yet did not sin. By his grace we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us and rose again. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Padre Santo e bondadoso, in tuo amor infinito nos hiciste para ti, y cuando caímos en pecado y quedamos esclavos del mal y de la muerte, tú en tu misericordia enviaste a Jesucristo, tu Hijo único y eterno, para compartir nuestra naturaleza humana, para vivir y morir como uno de nosotros, y así reconciliarnos contigo, el Dios y Padre de todos. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Después de la cena tomó el cáliz y dándote gracias se lo entregó y dijo, Beban todos de él, esta es mi sangre de nuevo pacto, sangre derramada por ustedes y por muchos para el perdón de los pecados. Siempre que lo beban, háganlo como memorial mío. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Padre, en este sacrificio de alabanza y acción de gracia, celebramos el memorial de nuestra redención. Recordando su muerte, resurrección y ascensión, te ofrecemos estos dones. Santifícalos con tu Espíritu Santo, y así serán para tu pueblo el cuerpo y la sangre de tu Hijo, la santa comida y la santa bebida de la vida nueva en él que no tiene fin. Santifícanos también para que recibamos fielmente este santo sacramento y seamos perseverantes en tu servicio en paz y unidad. Y en el día postrero, llévanos con el bendita Virgen María, bendito Pablo y todos tus santos al gozo de tu reino eterno. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father,
Pascua sea sacrificado por nosotros. This is the table not of the church, but of Jesus Christ. It is made ready for those who love him and who want to love him more. So come, you who have much faith and you who have little, you who have been here often and you who have not been for a long time or ever before, you who have tried to follow and you who have failed, come not because the church invites you. It is Christ and he invites you to meet him here. Los dones de Dios para el pueblo de Dios.
uno en nuestra propia lengua. Oremos. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, Savior Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace. Grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ, our Lord. Bow down before the Lord. Concede, O oh Señor misericordioso, a tu pueblo fiel perdón y paz para que puedan ser limpiados de todos sus pecados y te sirva con una mente tranquila. Por Cristo nuestro Señor. Let us bless the Lord. 